What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome to week 10 of the NCPL. We are going up against Jeff, coach of the Quebec Quagsires, and he's got a really bulky, uh, he's got a really stally team for the most part, with a little bit of offense sprinkled in there, and it's a pretty weird team. I think we have a decent matchup. That said, this week was really rushed um, from a prep standpoint, so I feel a little, little so-so. Um, I, I could feel a little more confident in my team, but... We'll see how it goes. If you haven't seen the team builder, uh, please do check that out because there is still plenty of reason, still plenty of thought that went into the team that I did make. And regardless, let's uh, let's see what he ends up bringing. No Arcanine. No Arcanine. Of all things to not show up. Arcanine. Holy cow. Okay, so... Okay, so Mega Absol is here. Uh, that is... Man, he brought a really stally squad, to be honest. It's a really cool color scheme, though. I like the color scheme. Alright, what do we say here? What do we say here? So we probably got a Volt Absorb Lantern. We probably have a Dry Skin Toxicroak. Not surprised by that at all. Magic Bounce, Mega Absol. It's probably got some special coverage. You know, Chansey is probably going to be bulky. It's probably got Defog, Tapu Finny. Yeah, there's nothing too crazy here, to be honest. Probably Physically Defensive Weezing. Especially defensive, Chansey, probably mixed defenses, Tapu Finny, offensive, probably physical, Toxicroak, and then mixed Absol and special Lantern, if I had to guess. Hmm. I want to set up my hazards. I kind of wanted to start up. Oh my goodness, Lizzie in the chat. Hmm. Let's see here. Let's see here. I'm gonna ask him if he can link the match in the uh, Discord. What's the best lead here? I think I think Garboder is the best lead here. I kind of just want to get up a Toxic Spike. Yeah, I kind of just want to get up a Toxic Spike. I think that makes the most sense here. What does he lead with? Leads off with Mega Absol. Okay, not too bad. He could be running knockoff if he wants to. I'm gonna just click Drain Punch. That's the reason I have this. He stays in, goes for knockoff, he's gonna take some Rocky Helmet damage, and we're gonna get some healing back. Yum! Yum! Give me all that juicy health. Okay, so what does he go into on a Drain Punch? He probably goes into... What does he go into? He probably... He probably switches out here. Probably switches out here, so I kind of want a Toxic Spike. Yes! Yes, we Toxic Spike as he switches. Nice, I like that. I like that. Now, this one is a little bit problematic to deal with, to be honest. He could Toxic Spike himself. He could Will-O-Wisp if he wants to. I kind of want to go into my Thunderous T here and just start clicking Thunderbolt because it'll probably do a lot to this and it's probably physically defensive. I could go into Suicune here if I wanted to. What's he going to go for? He's probably going to set up his own Toxic Spike if I had to guess. Yeah, I'm going to go into Thunderous T here. As he goes for the Will-O-Wisp. Okay, so that's less than ideal because... Wait a minute. Where are my leftovers? Oh, leftovers must go before burn. So if he goes into Mega Absol here, it gets poisoned, which I'm totally fine with. Otherwise, he has to go into Chansey or Lantern here, so I'm going to Nasty Plot. He goes into this. He goes into this. So he's pretty much committing to letting this thing die. Which I'm totally fine with. Yeah, he's either going to knock off or Ice Beam here. Either way... Do I want to just go into Garboder or do I want to go into Scizor? Or do I go Suicune? I think I go Suicune. Hmm... Knockoff will do like 25. Actually, I'm just going to go Garboder. He's got to be in pretty offensive one. He goes for Foul Play. Oh, interesting. A Foul Play Mega Absol. 
I'm a little bit confused, to be honest. Let's see here, what does he go into? Whatever comes in is getting poisoned. He goes into this to uh, take up the Toxic Spike. That's totally fine. Let me check my Suicune real quick to see how well it takes a plus two Gunk Shot from Toxicroak. And it takes it fine, so I'm going to go hard into that. If he wants the Swords Dance, that's fine. As he taunts. Interesting. He taunts. Is he going to stay in and try to set up, or is he going to go into Chansey? Let's see if he stays in. Oh, he goes into this. So maybe it is a, what's it called? Volta, or Water Absorb. Maybe it's a Water Absorb Lantern. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. What's he going to go here? Go for here. A Volt Switch, maybe? I think either way, I go into my Thunderous T here. I see Ice Beams. Oh no, and he gets a crit. He gets a crit. So he predicted that, but he gets the crit. Oh, that sucks. That actually sucks. This thing put in so much work. This thing put in so much work. It was one of my best ways of, uh, what's it called? Getting Tapu Fini, but... Okay, well, what do we do here? What do we do here? Do we go just get off some damage with Grass Knot? So he's running Ice Beam. I still don't know much about this Lantern. Other than that, it's probably Water Absorb. It might not be. It might not be, but... Hmm... I do kind of want to Grass Knot here. I also kind of want a Thunderbolt. How much does Grass Knot do to this? This is an Assault Vest Lantern that I'm calking against. Grass Knot would, do, would not do a lot at all. Hmm. Do I just sacrifice this? No, I don't. I don't, because once Toxicroak dies, he doesn't have any priority, and I can hammer away with this. How much damage did that do? That did, what, 91% with a crit. So he looks to be max special attack. Yeah, he's got a lot of special attack investment. So he might be the typical Assault Vest set. Which is honestly kind of scary. I think I might just go for Grass Knot to get damage off on this. Because he could be running Hidden Power Fire as well. Yeah, I'm just going to get some damage. That did 29%, so I don't think he's Assault Vest then. Yeah, I don't think he's Assault Vest then. Wait a minute, is he Leftovers? Yeah, we saw Leftovers. So he's not Leftovers. He isn't super bulky, but he is see here. Yeah, he's probably like the typical lantern set with some mixed bulk, but a lot of special attack. Does my guard jump take this out? Yeah, it should. Yeah, it more than enough. Does more than enough damage to it. How about my Tangrowth? How does my Tangrowth fare against it? No, it's not going to do enough. It doesn't get too KO'd, which is nice. But... Hmm... I want to go guard jump, and I want to get up my rocks. I want to get up my rocks. As long as Weezing is around... Oh, I want to get rid of Weezing. He can Ice Beam my Tangrowth if he wants to. Darn it, now he can spam Volt Switch.
That was one of my hardest ways of hitting Weezing, which is now looking scarier. How much does Garchomp's Dragon Claw do to this? Not enough. What about to a physically defensive Weezing? Also not enough. Hmm. Does he have an electric type attack? Let's see here. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go into Suicune here, I think. And scout for an electric type attack. Actually, it's got leftovers. Ugh, I don't like this. I don't like this. I think the play here is to go into Garchomp and then pull a double. I threaten this out. He can go into Weezing here, and if he does, I'm going to want to go back into Suicune. On a potential Ice Beam anyways. So I'm going to double back into Suicune. As he switches out into Weezing, which is the typical, only to be expected. And now I kind of want to substitute. As he switches back into Lantern, probably. He goes into Chansey. Get up a nice substitute. <laughs> Everyone's going to go crazy now. What's he going to do here? Is he going to get up his rocks? No, I go Garchomp here. I go hard Garchomp as he gets up his Stealth Rock. Oh, he just straight up Seismic tosses. What? I think if I SD here, I might win. Could be running Ice Beam though. His Weezing is super healthy. No, my Dragon Claw is not going to do enough. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Hmm. I'm going to get at my Stealth Rock. Don't Ice Beam. Don't Ice Beam. Okay. He doesn't Ice Beam. Now what does he do? Now does he go into Weezing? Hmm. Now does he go into Weezing? Does he have Ice Beam? Stealth Rock, Seismic Toss, Soft Boiled, and then maybe Thunder Wave, maybe Ice Beam? Hmm. What do I do here? Do I SD? Do I SD here? I think I SD here. Okay, is he seismic tosses again? Am I in sucker punch range from Toxicroak? No, I'm not. So this is when I start attacking. Do I knock out Chansey right now? At plus two, I do 67% minimum. At plus two, I do 67% minimum. He's at 76. That's a max defense Chansey. I can Z move here. The roll is in his favor if he's max defense. Do I use my Z-move here?
I don't want to use my Z-move if he goes into Weezing, potentially. Hmm. I kind of want a Dragon Claw. Yeah, I'm going to Dragon Claw. He Seismic Tosses again. Okay, puts himself in range. I'm going to Dragon Claw again because if he goes into Tapu Fini here, I can Z-move on him. And Chansey goes down. He goes into this. He goes straight into this. We are clicking Tectonic Rage right now. Get out of here, Tapu Fini! Yes! And that thing goes down. Now he goes into this. The question is, do we save our Garchomp right now? Do we save our Garchomp right now? Do we save our Garchomp? It's in Sucker Punch range from Toxicroak. I don't think we do. I think we just get a lot of damage off on this. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Before I click Dragon Claw, Dragon Claw would be halved. The, my Dragon type attacks will be weakened in Misty Terrain. Let me check real quick. Does Misty Terrain affect levitating Pokemon, though? Or, ah, oh, does it affect my attack because I'm grounded? Or does it not affect him because he's levitating? For example, for example, Tapu Koko, or er, Unknown, doesn't get a Psychic Terrain boost because it's levitating, but Tapu Lele does because it's grounded. Hmm. I feel like my Dragon-type attack will be less powerful. I think what I'm going to do is go into Garbodor here and save this to potentially Earthquake Lantern or Dragon Claw this later. Because I am in Sucker Punch range. He probably doesn't have Sucker Punch though. If he didn't go into Toxicroak right away. Yeah, I definitely want to save this. I'm going to go Garbodor here and see if I can get up some spikes or something like that. As he probably. Oh, he Sludge Bombs. That's right, he can't Will-O-Wisp me because of Misty Terrain right now. So I think what I'm going to do is set up some... Spikes. Do I want to set up Toxic Spikes? No. Yeah, I'm going to set up a Spike. He will o me, he can't do that because of Misty Terrain, so I'm fine with that. I'm going to... what does he do now? I'm going to set up another spike. He will o wisps me again. I don't know if he's just trying to stall out the Misty Terrain or whatnot, but... I still have another turn, so... Aw, oh, Jeff, my friend. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. If he didn't will o wisp twice and Sludge Bomb twice instead, I would be dead. So... That is, that is rough, my friend. So now the Misty Terrain is gone. And what I'm going to want to do is... Set up a Toxic Spike here. Because now if he wants to go into his Lantern, it'll be poisoned. Which means I can freely go into Suicune and click Extra Sensory. Because Lantern is going to take all of that Hazard damage and an Extra Sensory. He can pretty safely... I just want him to knock me out at this point. I'll set up another Toxic Spike to put the Toxic Poison on Lantern when it comes in. But, uh... Yeah, now I go into Suicune here. And, uh... Let's see here. How much is his Sludge Bomb doing? Is it breaking a sub? No, it's not. No, it's not. Let's see here. Yeah, it's not breaking a substitute. So my play here is to click substitute. That way he can't burn me. As he taunts, which is totally fine because I'm behind a substitute now. And then I can click extra sensory. Yeah, extra sensory is what I want to click here. That is 32. That does like nothing. Sludge Bomb, we take that. Our taunt is going to wear off soon-ish. We'll extra sensory again. Sludge Bomb, break our sub. Taunt ends. 
Oh no, he's still got another turn. That said... Yeah, we click extra sensory again. Even if he poisons us here, which would suck, uh, doesn't get the poison, which is really nice. Even if he poisoned us there, um, he's in Dragon Claw range from Garchomp, so Garchomp comes in and wins. So, yeah, my play is probably to just extra sensory. Yeah, my play is extra sensory here. And Toxicroak can't KO me at this point. It gets rid of the Toxic Spikes, which is really nice for Lantern, but yeah. Drain Punch. That was a crit. A crit did 31%, guys. What? And that didn't KO? Oh, that crit actually mattered then. <laughs> the crit gave him enough recovery to live my extra sensory. That's actually that's actually really funny. Alright, well I'm gonna extra sensory again. Unless he gets another crit, that's not gonna KO me, so. Down goes Toxicroak. And at this point, it's looking really good. Yeah, at this point, there's no reason for me to keep this thing alive. So, so what is my best play here? I just sack Suicune and then go into Garchomp. Yeah. That's my best play. I could, if I wanted to preserve my kill differential, I could go into Garchomp here, potentially, anticipating a Thunderbolt, or um, he could predict that and go for like Ice Beam, maybe, or a Scald or something like that. And even if I lose Garchomp, my Tangrowth can take this thing out, but I don't think it's worth it. We flinch him. We flinch him, of all things. We flinch him, of all things. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Well, extra sensory again because it's the safe play. Let's see Thunderbolts, and I want to give this kill to Garchomp because Garchomp put in all the work this this game. So GG Jeff. Um, okay, so how did I think this match went? Overall, I think it went okay. Um, overall, I think it went okay. I played a little bit aggressively with my Thunderous T and some of my other Mons, uh, maybe a little bit too aggressively in the beginning, and that made Weezing a little bit more of a threat, but Garchomp was able to plow through just like I wanted. We had Scizor in the back too, which was really nice, and yeah. Yeah, I think that's really kind of what it came down to. I'm glad the Suicune set also kind of put in work. Uh, yeah, getting to uh, just extra sensory substitute and uh, that sort of thing, whittle away at the wheezing so that my Garchomp could come through. And yeah, Garchomp. Garchomp put in all the work this week, so good stuff. And next week we go up against Caden. I actually know who we're going up against next week, and that's because Caden let me know before this match, a few days ago actually, that we might have to play a day or two from the time of this battle right now because. He is super busy this upcoming week, and so maybe only Monday or Tuesday of the upcoming week, when we typically have, you know, Monday through Sunday to battle, uh, maybe not even Tuesday, he'd be okay to battle because he's busy. So we're going to have to talk about that because I don't think I can prep for another match um, by tomorrow. So we'll see. We'll see. He's got a scary team. Anyways, we are now 9-1. We are still tied for first. We're technically still second because we, lo we lose the tiebreaker to Manu, who is also 9-1 at the moment. But either way, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like I say this um, every now and then, but every single week, I feel like I have to play well to win. I don't have a team that always has like a really good matchup or has like some overwhelmingly great matchup against one particular team or is absolutely bodied by another team. But I feel like I'm always on the brink of, if I prep well and if I play well, I can win just about any match. But also, if I don't do that, I can lose any match. And honestly, I really like that. I feel like it keeps me honest and it means this team is really more reflective of me than the team itself. So, yeah, uh, enough said. See you guys next week. But until then, this is Moon Knight Zero. And this mission is complete. <laughs> <laughs>